Hi guys, my name's Hayley Quinn and today I'm joined by an old friend and very special guest because I am in Hollywood. Hollywood! Yeah! <laughs> so I thought while I'm here I have to ask this guy a few tips. This is JT Tran, founder of the ABCs of Attraction and I know that you've got amazing, extremely detailed advice that you've been yeah. helping loads of guys out and I've seen your success around the world so thank you for joining in. Well, thank you for coming <laughs> and visiting. Right, amazing. So the thing I want to talk to you about is and this is there's no, no. no word of a lie. I've been having like these mad moments of like attraction to guys that are shorter than me. Like been, how much shorter? I have one. Well, one guy is about my height when I'm not, not wearing any and, heels. And how tall are you? I am 5'8". Five 5'8". Eight. Five eight. Okay, yes. I'm 5'5". Uh, five five, so most then, girls are taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had the other guy who I met quite recently. And he was, I'd say, two or three inches shorter than mm -hmm. me. So quite a significant step shorter. But there was lots of things about him. I was like, yeah, really hot. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, there was something intangible about his hotness. Right? Wow, it's just like I just you know I've just had these mad things. I'm like, okay, there's something that these guys are doing here that's really getting me. But I know also a lot of the time when I'm working with guys, the height is one of those big things that you know women talk about. There's mm -hmm. lots of the idea that women select upon there. It's easy for guys to feel, especially with what's in the mainstream media, that they're not good enough or they're inadequate. Right. And that, like, I hate all of that stuff anyway. So I know you are the man, the pro yeah. at teaching guys who are five foot five. And shorter. shorter yeah. How to uh, be amazing with women. Yeah. I always like to say, I mean, I wish I was born tall, dark, and handsome, but I can settle for being short, stunning, and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, my first girlfriend, she was like five foot nine, like blonde, blue eyes. I know you've been telling me about your blonde girlfriend. Yeah. I've been hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, like, I, I, I love that challenge. And there's something about, like, a shorter guy getting with a taller girl that I find exciting. Mm. But I also understand with my students, it's very intimidating. Right. Right, because... I mean, it's intimidating at the best of times for any guy ever, right? And mm. then if you have this other thing, and you know, it's like everybody has something, right, physically, that they feel, or most people do, that they don't feel 100% right. settled with. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with all the guys that come to you? Well, first of all, let's just call out the elephant in the room. Uh -huh. Women do select on height. They it's, do. It's, it's, it's the truth. Like, but it's men select on, like... Use. Boobs and booth, body yeah. fat, age, mm. like we all do it just yeah. in different ways. But here's the thing you also have to accept too. The corollary to that is there are ways to get over it. Mm -hmm. I've had students that were like, it'll never happen. It'll never but it's like I show you that it happens. Like you have to be the exception to the rule. Right. And by doing, I think you said this previously, if you do what everyone else is doing, you're gonna get their results. So what I do has to be different than what right. a tall guy does. Yes. So first of all, realize that I can get away with being a lot more aggressive and dominant than a taller guy. If like a big six foot tall guy try to like grab you yeah. and pick you up, <laughs> then it would be scary. Now, there are appropriate ways to touch girls and I, I teach that. You don't wanna be creepy or anything like that. But I can, after having a conversation with her, making her laugh, I can be like, I can literally do my caveman maneuver where I pick her up and I just hold her in my arms. And I've had girls tell me later that like, that was a the moment they wanted to sleep with yes. me. Yes, okay, I would like to add something here. Because you you kind of, obviously as a woman, when you're getting into a guy and you're mm -hmm. thinking, oh, is this the kind of guy I want to have a sexual relationship with? Right. There's something in your mind starts to do the algorithms and starts to fantasize, you know, mm -hmm. and imagine, you know. Oh, so, 50 shades of gray here. Yeah, exactly, so what it's good, I think, by doing something that's a bit more primal and making strong physical contact, she's able to get a sense of how dominant you'd be or how you'd mm -hmm. be sexually with her and that you're sexually confident and comfortable within yourself, which I think is one of the key things that women are always looking out for. Yeah, in that unconsciously. Kind of space. Yeah. I mean, and going off of what you uh, were just saying, this is a joke I like to say. How are men like snowstorms? You don't know how many inches you're going to get. You don't know how long it'll last, right? So you as a guy, when you're short, you don't have that kind of height of like that perception of masculinity. So you have to do other things. So mm -hmm. I talked about being more dominant, aggressive, and caveman that shows that sexuality. The other things to show sexuality is like having dance skill. Okay, having, you know, a good fashion and hair sense. Those are all mm -hmm. kind of secondary indicators of sexuality. Being surrounded by girls. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I'm Hollywood, like I would have to say the majority of like the, the tens, quote unquote, that I've gotten is one of the reasons is because I've been pre-selected by women. I'm like rolling right. deep with girls. And when you're a short guy, people look. I guarantee like 
when you date a shorter guy like you've been doing, people stare. And I'm like an Asian guy with like a tall white girl. People stare <laughs> and people judge. And women, it's kind of this this snowball effect. Because where... women do judge based on other women's opinions, mm-hmm. right? That mm-hmm. is a real thing. So women select as a group. So also that also means there's, I think there is a value if there's you meet a woman for whatever reason, she's not your 100% type, you just don't have that level of sexual connection, friend attractive women and like yeah. have them in your social circle you know because if you have lots of women around you and but you are also a sexual guy and you put that across it really helps also the dance skills thing one of the guys amazing dancer he danced some like brazilian dance i can't yeah. remember what it was but it, i was just like oh my god he can lead me around a dance yeah. floor he can tell me off that i'm not used to being led mm-hmm. and the fact that he can move so well immediately you start going he's gonna be amazing yeah. in bed like for me, I know I, I took introductory to hip hop. That's about yeah. it. <laughs> I only know enough to do a little bit of dancing, but that's all I need. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I use dance to isolate the girl to the dance floor after I've sort of like befriended the group, and from there, both have a conversation and sexually escalate. I want to show sexuality. Um, if you're a short guy and you always try to hide your in a platonic sense, your sexual interest, you'll never get anywhere. Right. So I will put that forth a lot faster than say a taller guy who needs to kind of play the gentle giant, you know. Right, so true. And another thing is going to like opening and approaching a girl, I like to say this, and it, it works so well, especially I have a lot of Asian, I have these Asian students and they've got like um, Asian accents. So there are these two great openers, okay? Um, one is if you have an accent, do my kamikaze opener. It's like, and just imagine a, an Asian heavy accent, all right? Because it, it happened when the student, he was like really fobby, he was short, and there's like six foot tall blonde, and literally this is what he says you know, opens, touches her, gets her attention, and then, you are fucking beautiful! <laughs> and then it's just like so out there, and it makes her think of you as completely different. Because mm-hmm. if you are short, if you're like Asian, you can't be generic. And when you say something like that, that's, you know, they say that if you cuss, you know, not like a pirate or a sailor, but like if you cuss a little, it shows more honesty and genuineness. Mm. And then it has that fucking, which is a little bit of sexuality. Mm. And no one expects that from a little guy or an Asian guy, right? Right, and I love what you're saying. It's about prizing the individual and working with what you've got. Because mm. isn't that what we all have to do? We have to go, right, like I'm not gonna be everybody's thing, but I am me. And the more that you take on board your individuality and embrace it and can go for it and have ownership of it, I think the more sexy you become. Right. And another one, this is one I really like too, is one thing I realized when I started dating a lot of taller girls is, Tall, attractive girls don't get hit on a lot. No, they don't. They like, don't. they only get hit on by, like, other, like, six-foot-tall dudes. And, like, six-foot-tall dudes also, like, shorter girls. Right. In fact, loads of my friends, they are models or they're, like, really in the tall, like, over five-foot-ten category. And for them, it's like, they do, they get annoyed because they wanted to be the cute, petite ballerina girl mm-hmm. growing up. And they feel like they intimidate guys. They're not the girl that the guy will hit on. They'll go for the shorter friend. And then they'll go, oh, What's wrong with me? Right. So my opener, I call this my Amazon opener. I go up to a girl. and she Again, if (laughs) they're they're taller than me, which most girls are, I just go like, you are tall and gorgeous. I love you already. Oh. And girls, I I literally just stop girls where they were just like, oh my God. (laughs) Because they never expect her from someone like me to do that. And it acknowledges that there is a height difference, but I'm completely cool with it. I have the balls and confidence to do that. Mm. And so, you know, they're not uncomfortable with that height difference. Right. So... Physically, too. So you've opened, you've talked, maybe you've caveman. Now, maybe you're uncomfortable uh, talking to a girl and she's taller than you because talking like this can be uncomfortable. So what I do is I sit down as fast as possible because you're taller than me. Right, but it doesn't right? show, but you right? You can't tell, right? You can't tell on the video that she's like much taller than me. So I will sit down as fast as possible because out of sight, out of mind. It doesn't occur. That is so smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be, I'll play like bumper cars. I'll just make up any excuse. I was just like, oh my God, it's like rush hour. Everybody keeps bumping into it. Uh, let's move. I'll just use any excuse to move to the side, to move to a couch, to move anywhere. It doesn't matter the excuse. Just make any excuse to sit down as fast as possible. Because again, when you're sitting, no one can tell. Just like when the lights are off and you're in bed, the height difference doesn't matter at all. That is amazing. And that's so smart, actually, because I was thinking about that in the couple of dates I've gone out recently with shorter guys. I felt more comfortable, you know, sitting down or being on the couch with someone 
you then learn to relax and that allows you to test out your physical boundaries as well. So I think mm-hmm. that's extremely outside, you say outside, <laughs> outside, 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 out of mind. <laughs> so we're the little one, the little oh, so ninja like, We're all the same, like, what's it when you're horizontal you're really down? down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I love it. Yeah. And I guess finally, there's something that I like to call command presence. You as a shorter guy have to give off more confidence than say a taller guy. Mm-hmm. Because perception is taller guys are you know, more attractive, smarter, more confident just because of height. It may not be true in real life, mm-hmm. but that's the general social perception. So when you're shorter, um, there's a study that I think Harvard professor did where it, she called it like power poses. All right, yeah. Right? So if you were to do this where, you know, if, if you can see on, on the screen, something like this, okay? Do that for two minutes. And what the study showed, what Harvard showed was your testosterone goes up and your stress level, uh, cortisol goes down. Mm-hmm. But also the perception, like you don't actually need to like stand in a claw like this, like you're Superman. But the idea is physically, okay, projecting your body language, like outside of yourself, having what they call like the military command presence. Mm-hmm. You're secure in yourself and people are gonna wonder, okay, this guy, it doesn't act short. Right. Okay? He's bigger than life, like mentally and emotionally. And that's really important because it starts creating this biochemical change. Maybe you're a little bit insecure now, but by doing that for two minutes every day, your life will actually change because your stress levels will go down, you'll increase your testosterone, and you'll have command presence. So you'll be bigger inside your mind and inside your heart, all right? You want to be bigger than life to her. Exactly, and I love that. And also there is this massive amount of correlation between the body, and what you're thinking. Mm. So if you walk in anywhere, it's like, I always say it's like when people go into exams or something, they immediate school, they're all like, they'll be be stressed and hunched up and small. And then you'll perform worse. You know, if you actually, same if you're going to a job interview anywhere, you have that open body language, commanding body language, and it will actually, if you're, even if you don't feel comfortable, if you make your body look comfortable, your body looks strong, it will influence your state of mind. So the two things work brilliantly together. Mm-hmm. Now, if you've thought, which I have, I just was like, I've learned stuff. <laughs> this, uh, these tips have been awesome. How can they find out more about your stuff? Well, I have a website at abcsofattraction.com as well as our YouTube channel where we put out uh, infill videos, educational videos, I love and videos. <laughs> yeah, any kind of inspirational, like, you know, just check it out at abcofattraction.com or email us at support at abcofattraction.com. Of course, and I'll be putting a link to that beneath mm-hmm. the video, so if you can't find it, please click, and I'll be back again. I'm here all the time, right? Like <laughs> twice a week uh, to speak to you guys. And thank you again for having me. And I'll see you back in London. Bye. Bye.